Man, ran out of printer paper. Yeah, just use this right here to make a little bill sale. Chuck that thing down there. It's a dirty piece of cardboard. Whoa! Cut my thermal artery here. Knife safety. Don't cut next to the the jewels or the thermal artery. But things I do for y'all in the interest of entertainment. I'm trying to make a bill sale. There we go. This old Tesla chopper. He's a, he's a bath. Been sitting up for a little bit. Oh no, sitting on a flat. That's like the fourth time this thing's went flat. With all these tires are made pops. See if my charger's still in here. Oh yeah, no problem. The fourth G seat. Put that down like that. Glove box, everything's good. Just gotta get her over there, get her aired up, folks. It's oh, blocking the view there. With a heavy heart, I'm gonna sell the chopper. Much sadness. It's been a good one, but it's it's time to pass the torch on this here complex machine. I just gotta find a buyer. I gotta find the right buyer that can take over responsibility. Massive responsibility of this complex machinery. 3,118 kilometers. 3118 on the odometer there. I'll just keep on limping it over. I'll just limp it over to my spot. These dudes don't kill me. Yeah, with a heavy heart. With a heavy heart. This will be the last Tesla Chopper tour. Showing you around Koreatown. I'm just filming on the iPhone, so it's going to be a little bit shaky. As a matter of fact, I'll just let y'all look at me. Oh yeah, rolling strong in the Tesla chopper, my friends. I just put my weight over here to the uh, port side to keep the weight off that tire. It's got enough air in it where you know it's not going to damage it. Now I couldn't put Filipino wife number two back there; it cut right into that rubber. It's got too much in the caboose. But I just uh, I just do the gangster lean over here to the port side, no problem. Limp up here same tire keeps going flat so I'm just gonna get them to patch it up one more time and folks the thing about it I'm not a, I'm not a salesman I'm not a, I'm especially not a used car salesman right I mean I'm one of them dudes like whenever I sell a car I tell too much I just want to be honest with somebody because my worst nightmare would be you know selling a car and Three days later, they call me up and tell me it's a piece of shit. And I ripped them off. I don't want to be known for that, right? So, anytime I ever sold a car in my life, I'd be like, I tell them exactly what the fuck's wrong with it. Just up front, what's wrong with it? Well, it's leaking a little bit of oil, two or three drops a day. Uh, sometimes it slips in third gear. <laughs> Motherfucker, take it or leave it. I'm not a used car salesman. So, uh,. Anyhow, whoever I sell this to, full disclosure, this motherfucker's riding on three May Pop tires, which means they may pop at any time, subject to go down at any time, and that's the way it is. Back brakes, non existent. Front brakes, scary, sketchy. If you're in first gear at about a quarter throttle, front brakes will stop you but if you're in third gear at full throttle and brakes angle help you oh shit somebody's when people are running it usually means somebody stole something it looks like a 7-eleven dude is at a full full sprint you got this lady at a full sprint 
I don't know, but usually when somebody takes off at full sprint, I don't know, maybe they left their wallet. Let me try to catch up to them, folks. Got action going down here in Korea town. Whoa, look at that. Okay, so now I'm going handhill. This young lady jumped the track. 7 Eleven dude is still running. Ain't no telling what kind of action is going on. Maybe it's just nothing. I gotta stay mission focused. I gotta stay focused on my mission. Fixing the May Pop tires. And you, know, and you know what, here in the, in the defense of this tire, the tire's been sitting for weeks now. And it just went down three quarters. So it's a slow leak. Slow leak. But still, you know, whoever, whoever I, whoa, go ahead there, my friend. I'm lucky I wasn't in second or third. Or I wouldn't have been able to stop this here machine. So the jeepney driver is beeping at this here gray vehicle. And let's take a look down through there. I don't see any action going on. I don't see the lady on the track. I don't know. So we'll just uh, give you a look here at the Jelly Bee. And I'm just cruising toward the uh, vulcanizing shop here. Folks, take a look at this flat one more time. So yeah, so we're gonna take a look at that one there. You just air up the others. That one seems to be holding strong. This how they little teamwork here. There you go, manually got it. Cool. All right, so this gentleman right here, take a look at it. There that bad boy up. And just jack that chopper up right there, folks. Put it up on blocks. Pretty interesting, folks, how they do things, you know, manually when you don't have machinery. They get it done. And he'll bring this little uh, water thing over here. And this is too cool right here. See, he don't even, he don't even got to take it off there to see if there's a flat. You just put water in here. Just put some water and put it around the tire. And you see if there's a flat in it. Too cool, huh? I mean, I'm easily, uh, easily amazed at stuff like this. Maybe you're not impressed, but it just saves time, right? Fill it up. There you go. Now we'll look, we got a, uh, a leak somewhere. Just look for bubbles, right? See if y'all see some bubbles. Looks like he's already got a, got a suspect there. Thing. Yeah. Check this more. 
that wound with that tack. I didn't even see that. Bringing in a tire. This dude almost got that one out. the blood technique just like that that's what this gentleman's got here so he's gonna patch it again put a plug in there that gentleman the back brake don't work Poor guy, he needed him to hold the back brakes so I could hold this thing in place and the back brakes don't work. So he's struggling with it. These tires be locked in place. I'm like, man, he ain't got no back brakes, brother. So he's trying to figure out how to get a, get a good grip on it. Yeah, so whoever buys this chopper, full disclosure, needs new tires. I think all of them at this point have been patched. But you know what? Here in the Philippines, folks, people don't buy new tires. They just keep getting patched and patched and patched and patched and patched. It's entertaining to watch these folks. I mean, they're doing a lot of, obviously, hard labor. But uh, it's interesting, both interesting and entertaining to see how they fix these tires so quickly without all of the typical tire shop you know equipment that you'd have in the west here just everything's by hand manual they get it done quick though careful like i said with a heavy heart a lot of sadness that i'm gonna have to let this here machine go but uh, we've just placed down to the village. The babies, the old lady, their grandma's house right now, but that's where, the, that's where we're at. Still have this little combat outpost here for now, but the babies and, uh, and the old lady, they're down there. They're having a great time at grandma's house, and uh, they're in good hands. They love it there, love the great outdoors, going to the beach. I mean, who wouldn't love growing up around the grandparents out in the country, right? So anyhow, I told y'all I got a tribal. I'm not gonna be here for a while. What do you do? Just let this thing sit over there on, and slowly go down on flats, and uh, then I gotta buy new tires for it, like my motorbike in Thailand. Nah, it's just time to pass this piece of gear forward on to somebody who's gonna use it. It's still got a lot of life in it, it really does. It's sort of sentimental to me, but it's not because I don't let objects determine where I go, what I do, gear that I have to drag with me because I'm sentimental to something. We had a lot of good times on this here machine. We got the videos and the memories. The kids will always remember riding around on this thing. But also, we've outgrown it. The kids, you know, the kids are getting bigger down there in the village. We either get a motorbike or a, a multi cab or one of them the jack the jack things uh so anyhow once i get done with my travel get back to the village I'll come up with a new form of transportation some type of new chopper and this here machine this this here machine right here will continue to roll in the streets of angeles city or wherever the, the new owner wants to take it but i'm gonna miss it but really what I'm missing, I'm just missing the, the good times. And luckily I have those documented on the video. 
and uh, you know, end of an era. But the only thing certain in this life, folks, is change. I contemplated giving this thing away, right? And you gotta kind of follow me here. Something like this, in a place like this, you have to give certain things like this away to the right person. Say if I walk up and hand a homeless guy the keys to this, where's he gonna plug it in? Where's, where's he gonna charge it? You're just setting him up for failure. He's gonna try to sell it or part it out. Um, it's like we gave rice cookers and electric appliances to our family years ago down in the village. They used it for a little bit, and once they got the electric bill, and uh, got shocked by the new electric bill, all that shit got put away and went back to cooking with wood. So things that foreigners don't think about, oh, why don't you buy them a rice cooker? Why don't you buy them this and that? Well, if you do that, then you gotta pay the electric bill. Because people, certain people can't afford to pay the electric bill. So giving this to somebody that's uh, on the street or whatever would make for a great video, but if you're just setting them up for failure. They'll sell it to somebody on the cheap and, you know, They'll be broke the fucking next day. So you gotta you gotta sell this or give this to somebody uh, that A can plug the damn thing in, B can make repairs, right? It needs some repairs, it needs the back brakes fixed, it needs the tires probably replaced uh, at some point. Uh, just a little tightening up, which which cause causes uh, maintenance money, right? So if you don't give it or sell it to somebody that has uh, enough money to maintain the thing, it just turns into a parted out piece of junk, right? All right, let's do them this time. Okay, so 100 pesos, less than two US dollars to get her fixed. And But the gentleman said, he said, in a few months, man, you, you probably need to replace this tire, right? It's just been plugged too many times. So 100 pesos, give them a 50 peso tip, everybody's happy. And now, damn, where'd I put the keys? Now we're on to, uh, on down the road. All right, roll up out of here. Let's get a couple of clothes. A mount, that's another thing. Whoever buys this comes with this little telescoping phone mount, but it's kind of broken. Oh shit, got a problem with pulling out of here. All right, folks, take a look under here. Oh shit, part of my redneck engineer in here broke. Gotta tie this back up here, so whoever buys this, you gotta understand that the back brakes, the uh, back brakes need some need some fixing, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see that right there. Okay, so look, my redneck engineer needs some help. This little thing right here gotta be tied up. Now look, whoever buys this, the back brakes are inoperable. Whoa, whoa. So I gotta tie this up till I get it permanently fixed here. Do some redneck engineering. Full disclosure now. I got to get in here and see if I got some more string. I'll show y'all how the trunk works. What I got in here. Oh yeah. 550 cord. It's gonna save my day. But I don't got a knife to cut it. I'm gonna have to borrow a knife. I see this this thing's gonna come with a uh, tarp. No, that's a poncho. But I need this here. Piece of 550 cord. Just need a, just need a small piece. Okay, so whoever buys this thing, until you get it fixed, always keep the 550 cord in here so you can make the repair. Look, it's right here. What you gotta do? This thing up through here, tie it on up there. A little piece of 550 cord in here, no problem. Just like that. Hmm. There's your finished product right there. So whoever buys this, you gotta get that fixed. And all this undercarriage here with the back brake system. See? Now it'll actually actuate, but these things are bent out so bad, the back brakes don't work. You gotta get them fixed. This thing also comes with a, uh, this is the parking brake here. Always use the parking brake. 
Just like that, folks, we're back on the way. Anybody wants to buy this, comes with these flags. You got two Philippine flags and a Jelly Roger, and a pirate flag. Now, it's not coming with this glove box because my girl Jamaica gave me this years ago. About half charge. I'll, I'll, throw, in a, I'll throw in a half charge. Uh, not a full charge because I ain't got time. Because you can't catch Papa Bear. <laughs> you can't catch Papa Bear. Here's some more facts about the chopper if you're interested. Uh, it's got over 3,000 kilometers on it. I think what? Roughly 3,200 kilometers. It was originally purchased on March, in March of 2022. Then I picked it up in uh, September of 2022. So it's a two owner, two owner vehicle purchased locally here in Angeles City. Uh, comes with all the records, the paperwork, everything. I got all that, I got all that together. I'll say a few things about it, right? It's got three gears. Um, first gear will get you anywhere you want to go and at a speed that's reasonable, right? This thing's got small tires on it. The good thing is it's low to the ground at high speed. The bad thing is the speed bumps here in Angeles City. Uh, it can't navigate the big old monster speed bumps and that's what's taking out the back brakes, okay? So if you ever buy a new one of these here, especially in Angeles City, ground clearance and the biggest tires you can get. That's my best advice I can give you about these things. Now, if you live in an area that doesn't have these monster speed bumps, the Tesla chopper is fine. It's actually more stable because it's lower to the ground, but not in a place like Angeles City or most places here in the Philippines where no speed bumps are standard. They just pour the fucking concrete in the middle of the street, kind of form it up, you know, like they're dealing with Play-Doh. There's no forms. So, uh, First gear, that's the safest gear to keep it in. Second gear and third gear. Folks, I think the top speed on that thing is like 36 kilometers an hour. I put the flags on there, maybe a cut down, a little wind resistance. Maybe it's 35. To be honest, the thing goes too fast because when you're 36 kilometers an hour wound out with that thing, if you have a blowout or, or roll that thing, you, you, you're going to get some broken bones, stitches, road rash, half your fucking face would be missing. Should you wear a helmet? Well, yeah, you should, but I don't wear a helmet on the thing. But I'm not wind, winding it out in third gear, wide ass open on the throttle. First gear gets you any fucking where you want to go. Sometimes if you get in fast traffic, click it up to second. First gear that's as fast as you truly want to go. Now, hey, big pimpin', if you buy it at Shores, and you, you, you go full throttle in uh, third gear, that's up to you. I mean, it's your life. But if you roll that little thing at 36 kilometers per hour, well, realize it's like rolling a fucking bicycle at 36 kilometers an hour, right? What else can I say? It's got reverse, all the lights and everything work, turn signals, the horn works. Everything is functional except for the braking system, which is sort of critical. Um, and it needs new tires. There you go, full fucking disclosure. What else? Uh, the handlebars are a little shaky, it needs to be tightened up. Just minor maintenance issues, that thing will keep going. It's painted a nice, high visibility orange. If you look at it when I first got it, it was OD, OD green. You don't want a vehicle that's OD green because you're gonna get run over at night. It's high visibility orange. I put reflective striping all the way around that thing. Very high visibility at night. Uh, you know, it's got lighting. Make sure at night you turn the lights on. It's easy to forget to actually turn the switch on and get the lights going. being sold as is no warranty no guarantee full disclosure what you see on the video is what you get uh what's the range on it shit folks i, I say to go 50 to 60 kilometers to advertise 80 but i mean we we've had it where we went days without charging the thing uh, 
if you keep it charged, there's no way you're going to go in Angeles Lee City and run out of juice. But if you go two or three days without charging it, then yeah, you start to run out of juice. Extremely, extremely hot days. When you put a full load on there, two Filipinas, two babies yourself, and run that son of a bitch up and down the road for two hours, it will thermal shut down. I thought the battery was damaged. I don't believe that anymore. It was just doing some type of thermal shutdown because it's too hot. Because um, once you charge that battery overnight, that thing is strong. I mean, it's the torque is there. When you hit it, I mean, it'll jerk your neck if it's fully charged. Uh, so all that's good to go. Comes complete with a charger. I'm not throwing in the extension cord because I, well, maybe I could. I might throw in an extension cord. Just depends on the deal. That's negotiable. When, when this extension cord is probably six feet long. I'm gonna negotiate that. That's a negotiable point based on purchase price. Hmm. It comes with um, a half a tank of gas, so to speak, half charge. So you're ready to roll. You're ready to roll. Two sets of keys. Got both sets of keys. Two two ignition keys. Two keys for the trunk. Uh, comes with that camouflage. I don't know if it's a tarp or if it's a poncho, but I'm leaving it in there. Extra link of 550 cord in case parts start falling out the undercarriage. You can just get up in there, tie them up. But need to put you a knife in there so you can slice that 550 cord to the appropriate length. So I'm going to have to put a few more kilometers on it this morning. i got to go drop my laundry off. Once I drop my laundry off, that thing's going to be ready, ready for the next, uh, the next owner, the next buyer to take it the next 3,000 kilometers. I truly, folks, that thing's a champion, right? At some point, the batteries are going to go out on any type of electric vehicle, right? But we've run the heck out of this thing, and it is still, it's, it's just very strong. So, uh... I think it'll go at least another 3,000 kilometers, if not, you know, 10, 12. I say go 10,000 maybe, probably before you got to replace the battery. Maybe that's optimistic. Let's say let's say six. It'll double. I predict that it'll go at least 6,000 kilometers before you have to replace the battery. But that's just me guessing, and I'm not guaranteeing anything. This thing is sold as is, new buyer assumes all liability and responsibility for operating this complex piece of machinery it's not for beginners it's not for kids it's a complex uh, piece of machinery there you go the tesla chopper up for sale even though with great sadness great sorrow in my heart it's got to go if i do my set of day you, you you're really gonna sell that Oy. Look, sometimes by the time you transport something from point A to point B, fix all the maintenance, you got so much money in it, you're better off just buying a new one where you're, where you're going, right? See how that works? So it's got to go, but I got to go drop my laundry off. 